firstly, before we kind of jump into anything, I did want to go ahead and um, have this land acknowledgement. So we pay respect to elders, both past and present, and are grateful for the opportunity to live and work on these ancestral lands. We hope to demonstrate our commitment to truth by honoring the land on which we gather, which is occupied, um, which is the occupied territories of Tongva, Tatabiam, Serrano, Kich, and Chumash peoples. And that's specific to Los Angeles County, since Out Against Big Tobacco Los Angeles um, does work uh, regionally within Los, Los Angeles County. Okay, so for the agenda, um, just a quick icebreaker. That'll be the next slide, just so we can do some introductions. It's a relatively small group, so I always think it's nice to be able to hear a little bit more about, you know, where folks are coming from. We'll talk about who we are. Um, what Out Against Big Tobacco does, and then an overview of the actual community engagement program, uh, what that looks like, and then we'll have some time at the end um, about questions or for questions. Oh, sorry, the next slide. Um, Another slide I'd like to include in all of my presentations, um, just a slide to decolonize our spaces, making sure that we acknowledge that and recognize that. We all come with different lived experiences. So we just, you know, I ask that we honor those shared in the space to take care of yourself, stay in touch with your mind and body. If you ever feel you're compromising your privacy, since we do like to record these for the sake of sharing for folks who maybe can't make it um, after the icebreakers, of course, um, that you are feel like just feel free to move in and out of the space as you see fit. Um, I'm human. I might mess up. Uh, so your patience is very much appreciated. And then just to please be respectful um, by allotting each presenter and attendee grace and actively contributing to a welcoming environment. So for our icebreaker, it's Pride Month. Happy Pride Month, y'all. Um, just quick name, pronouns, and whether or not you're attending any Pride events, and if so, which are you most excited about? If you're not attending any, maybe any other events that you may, might be um, attending that you're looking forward to. And I can go ahead and pass it over to, from what I can see, um, I'll go ahead, uh, Judy? Yes. <clears throat> Hi, uh, I go by she and her. <clears throat> My name's Judy Kim, and I own and operate the Gardena Cinema located in Gardena, California. And we hosted our um, kickoff for Pride Month uh, this past weekend, we showed uh, The Matrix and The Birdcage. And then um, we will be showing actually um, Death Becomes Her, which is uh, co-hosted uh, with the, um, it was formerly known as the South Bay and Long Beach uh, Queer Book Club, but now it's known as Quack. Um, there's an acronym, but I don't know what it is right now because I have to look it up. But uh, if you look at LA Quack Club, on Instagram, you can follow them. And uh, a portion of the proceeds for the tickets for Death Becomes Her will go towards um, an organization called the Trans Defense Fund. And uh, a little bit about who we are. Oh, sorry, I always forget that that's there. Okay, so just a little bit about who we are. Um, I did want to specifically introduce, um, you know, myself, Jessica Esquivel. Um, I'm the program coordinator for Out Against Big Tobacco. So should you, you know, um, be um, accepted as a subcontractor for the sex cohort, then we would be working very closely. Um, my intern is having Zoom um, issues. They just let me know. So um, they're probably not gonna be able to join until a little bit later, but she is currently our um, Out Against Big Tobacco Los Angeles intern. Uh, her name is Victoria Williams and her pronouns are she, her. And then I did wanna go ahead and just- no, Victoria's like... raising their hand, just let you know. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, there you are, Victoria. Okay. Um, I think you should be able to come off mute. Yeah. Hi. Can you hear oh. me? Yeah. I'm going to Perfect. Go back. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Victoria. I am the current Out Against Big Tobacco LA intern, just like Jessica mentioned. Um, so basically, I provide provide a lot of support for like the events that we do in person, as well as like I help with the, like the administrative side of things, like making sure everything is organized on our side. Um, as well as just like reaching out to people, networking, making sure that um, people know what type of resources that we're providing and making sure that our coalition is like always up to date. So yeah, that's pretty much just a little bit about what I do. Awesome. Thanks so much, Victoria. 
Um, yeah, and then our director, uh, Danny, uh, we have another program coordinator, Aston Williams, Isais, y'all met earlier, as well as Ariela and Ryan. And together we are the network team. And then I also want to make sure that we kind of acknowledge Lou. Um, oh my gosh, their last name is kind of escaping me right now. But Lou is also our comms intern um, for the We Breathe, we Breathe program that Ryan um, is kind of overseeing. Lou Arona. Did I, did I pronounce that correctly? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. So just a little bit about our mission and vision for Out Against Big Tobacco Los Angeles. Ultimately, we are trying to um, eliminate tobacco-related health disparities, specifically within the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer um, community in Los Angeles County. Uh, we want to communicate, engage, and positively impact the health of LGBTQ folks in Los Angeles County through tailored resources. I think that a lot of the time, um, you know, as we kind of like work to achieve health equity in different various communities, um, you know, they do have to be kind of tailored or culturally tailored, right? So that's something that we're ultimately trying to achieve through this program. And just some of the goals of Out Against Big Tobacco Los Angeles is to adopt and implement a comprehensive tobacco retail licensing policy. I know that's kind of like, sounds like jargon. Really, it's just a policy kind of to get, you know, like um, the tobacco retailing licensing um, for it to be comprehensive, uh, for it to kind of ban, you know, just go further or above and beyond flavored tobacco products, ultimately all um, commercial tobacco products. And then secondly, to engage diverse individuals and organizations in tobacco control advocacy work. We know it's kind of like a niche area. So really all that we can do to uplift and support, you know, emerging public health leaders, youth, um, having internships available, you know, like Victoria was talking about a little bit earlier. Um, just kind of having these different platforms in order to engage that kind of work. So what we do, I kind of broke it down into four spaces. The first being educating LGBTQ plus communities on the tobacco related health disparities themselves. Um, I think there's a lot kind of um, is under, I guess a lot like a lack of resources in general. Um, so just to be able to kind of share that with our community and really acknowledge it um, as an issue. And then secondly, emphasizing the need for data equity and research on LGBTQ plus communities. I'll talk about it a little bit in more emphasis later about just some of the data collection that we're doing to ensure that our voices as an LGBTQ person who, you know, or as yeah, as someone who identifies as LGBTQ plus, um, ensuring that our voice is not just like is, you know, it's not just me talking about our communities at large. Um, thirdly, reducing access to commercial tobacco through legislative policy within LA County. So policy is very a very, very long process. And that's, you know, something that I pride myself in terms of like doing the work long-term, like it's gonna take a while, but we're here doing the work. And then lastly, supporting and serving emerging leaders in public health spaces. And that's kind of alluding to our public health internship. So again, just kind of like what Victoria was talking about a little bit, what they do in their role. We are currently um, hiring for another intern, um, essentially, this kind of coincides with our, um, I, I don't, I guess pipeline is kind of the wrong word to use, but in terms of, again, kind of creating a space where we're able to create some type of like transition for folks who are, you know, whether in their undergrad work or trying to, again, get more tobacco control advocacy work, that we're, we're, we have a space for that to create that kind of like really stable foundation. So we are currently um, apply or hiring for that. If you know anyone or if you, you know, again, if we kind of sharing with your networks, um, I do have some information here to send your cover letter, resume, and unofficial transcript to hajobs at healthaccess.org. And I think we will be closing that. Isais, if you don't if you remember, it might be the end of June. Um. It might be the end of June, maybe sooner. I would recommend folks um, <clears throat> watching this to um, apply as soon as possible. Uh, you can go on online uh, to Health Access, um, to the Health Access Foundation website or the network, uh, the California LGBTQ Health and Human Services Network to find this job posting. Um, and if it's still up there, that means we're still accepting applications. But if it's not, that means we're not. But 
um yeah would definitely <clears throat> apply sooner than later yeah and i believe we still are accepting applications i saw one just come in today so um yeah I think actually, now, for sure yeah. um are you don't mind sharing the um website the web page for um the network that would be really helpful thank you so much Um, so just a little bit more about kind of what Out Against Big Tobacco does. Um, as far as educating and creating, our work is centered around the LGBTQ plus community and the various intersections our identities involve, such as tobacco usage and how prevention, um, intervention, and cessation might look for our community. This really requires us to learn, unlearn, and educate others um, on the knowledge we acquire within these topics. So I get especially excited about helping educators work with LGBTQ plus youth in order to meet their needs within tobacco control and intervention. So I just kind of included some pictures. I know that some of these presentations can get really wordy, so I kind of just wanted to show you all kind of like what we do. You see here on the right bottom hand side, thank you next, empowering LGBTQIA plus students in the fight against tobacco. So like I was just saying earlier, just that's something I personally get really excited about because my other, I guess, role in this life <laughs> is an educator. Um, so yeah, I really like kind of um, being in those spaces where I get to kind of be in both places, right? And they kind of meet in the middle. So really, yeah, really glad I get to do um, you know, educate and create in this in this role. As far as data equity and research, more recently we have begun to collect data within our communities for the sake of creating new and accurate um, research infographics. This is this in particular is what, what you're looking at is a trifle that we just created um, with you know more kind of accurate and updated information regarding tobacco usage within LGBTQ plus communities. Um yeah, so like we're, we're really trying to get more, like how I was saying earlier, kind of tailored um, material, like specific to our community, since I just don't think there's enough of it. Um, so yeah, so kind of really excited about that. And this is one of the options, again, later on, I'll talk about and more emphasis, kind of as um, a person who's applying for this program, uh, some of the different options that you're able to help us work on with. So one kind of, you know, this might be one is creating these educational resources um, for our communities. And then policy. <laughs> so uh, I think I mentioned a little bit earlier, ultimately one of our kind of main goals um, in the Out Against Big Tobacco Los Angeles program is to pass some type of policy specifically within the cities of San Fernando and Signal Hill. As Signal Hill doesn't have really any policy in place regarding tobacco control, uh, whereas San Fernando does have a TRL license in place, but it's not comprehensive, um, at, enough at least. So that's something that we are trying to, again, that's ultimately one of our goals. Um, previously, Out Against Big Tobacco was housed with Equality California, and they were able to get a policy passed in the city of West Hollywood. So you can see here the headline says, New West Hollywood Ordinance Prohibits the Sale of Flavored Tobacco and the Use of Coupons and Discounts and all on all tobacco products. So that's something that we really want to mirror in the work that we're doing um, now that Out Against Big Tobacco is housed at the network. So on the left there, we were able to meet the city, I mean the, the city, <laughs> the mayor of city of the city of San Fernando, um, Celeste Rodriguez. And then on the right here, um, this is us kind of, you know, working with, uh, or at the informational and educational days hosted by the Tobacco Endgame Center, where we, we did get to talk about kind of the various, um, you know, the importance of pol the policy um, for tobacco control. So an overview of the actual program and kind of what that might look like should you be accepted as a, a subcontractor. So what we try to, what kind of in just three bullet points, what we're trying to do in this program is to fund individuals and or organizations interested in building their capacity to par participate in LGBTQ plus tobacco control efforts. So again, I know it's kind of a very nuanced space, but it does give, you, give either you who might identify as LGBTQ plus or the opportunity as an ally to work with this community in particular. Um, also to support the work of Out Against Big Tobacco to prevent and reduce tobacco use and related health care disparities within the LGBTQ plus communities. So again, a little bit more on that like nuanced space um, of work where really, you know, it's ultimately public health and health equity that we're really trying to emphasize. 
And then lastly, uplifting the LGBTQ plus community within LA County towards healthier commercial tobacco free lives and just kind of emphasis on that commercial part of it. Um, also making that distinction between, you know, commercial tobacco, traditional tobacco, that's also something I think that as I've come into the space a little bit more and become more knowledgeable, that it's important to really make that distinction um, as we kind of further, you know, ourselves in this work. And if y'all have questions, please go ahead and feel free to like put those in the chat. Um, you know, that's something that I, there is a space towards the end to kind of like ask those questions. But, you know, should they come up, please feel free to write them out, write them down in the chat. So, you know, we don't forget. So the application has been um, open for, I think, about two, maybe a little over two weeks now. They are due June 21st. And kind of what your work or the time frame of your work would be from July, so starting next month, all the way up until June of next year. So it's a little under a year. That's how long the program is meant to last. Um, it will involve $2,500 for four selected individuals and or organizations. So you can apply um, on behalf of your organization or yourself as an individual. Um, and also, I know that there are some of our current subcontractors in this um, webinar, so just make sure that we also know that, you know, previous subcontractors are more than welcome to apply um, to this, the second cohort that we're hosting. And this is our um, flyer that went out. So this is where you can actually get the QR code for the application itself if you wanted to look at that or glance at that while we're going through the rest of this um, webinar. Thanks, Ari, for including that in the chat. So as far as el eligibility and what that looks like, again, individuals and organizations are more than welcome to apply. If you're selected, um, individuals are required to submit a W-9 form. Um, only if you're selected um, uh, during the application itself, you won't be required to submit that information. But again, should you be selected, and that's something that we do kind of expect to be submitted. Um, organizations do need to right off the bat upload a 501c3 letter and their tax ID. The tax ID is still accurate, right? You say you just want to make sure. Uh, yeah, that's that's still accurate. Okay, cool. Thank you. And community members and allies who are committed to serving the LGBTQ plus community. Again, you don't necessarily have to identify as someone who is LGBTQ plus, um, but you know, as long that you're an ally really passionate about this work, about serving this community, you're more than, again, welcome to apply. You may be already currently CTPP funded. Um, I know sometimes there's very specific um, rules regarding whether or not CTPP folks um, and those who are funded by them can kind of, you know, um, apply to other um, opportunities. And you that's definitely the case here in which you can, you can apply. Um, but you must be based in Los, Ange Los Angeles County since we do have specific um, work that is done here. And obviously this is kind of like where we're centering um, our work. So again, should you get um, accepted as a subcontractor, you might be wondering what your responsibilities look like. There are a few requirements. So one would be to be an active member of the California LGBTQ Health and Human Services Network. And you can do this through two ways, attending at least three network calls, which are usually the second Tuesday of each month. Um, and this would begin in August since the program itself starts in July. So kind of like a freebie that first month, but the second one, it would, that's kind of when that requirement would start. And then secondly, providing one to two updates via our listserv. Um, and you don't necessarily have to kind of use this as an opportunity for tobacco related um, work. It could also be an opportunity to show or showcase your own progress and work. And again, does not necessarily have to be tobacco control related. Um, so again, that would so that first kind of network call would take place on August 8th. I believe that's the right date. But yeah. And then for the second one, or I guess the second portion would be kind of choosing one of the following here. So you see that there's four different options. Kind of glancing over them quickly, and we'll go into a little bit more detail in the following slides. But first would be to attend and assist Out Against Big Tobacco staff on planning one event. Um, so this would, this typically looks like a tobacco awareness day. 
Um, and then maybe I could just go ahead and go over it. So this is option one. So this is one example um, that I know was done a couple, maybe a couple years back. Isa, Isa, if you don't mind talking a little bit about kind of what that entailed. Yeah, so this was a big queer convo that occurred in, I believe, 2019. And it was a collaboration um, amongst the other LGBTQ regional projects who were coming uh, together with us. <clears throat> and we invited some uh, some folks like uh, Bambi Salcedo and uh, T-Rock uh, advise uh, T-Rock members, board members, um, as well as other folks who are involved in uh, tobacco control or in the community uh, to talk about the importance of uh, reducing tobacco use in our communities uh, during the Great American Smokeout. And so we held this in the Los Angeles, goal, not the Los Angeles, it, it, what, we were held at the LA LGBT Center um, location, Gold Plaza, Um and mostly, uh, if you chose this option, what the extent of the work that you'd be involved in is helping to coordinate logistics and uh, helping to develop programming for an event such as this one um, and working closely with Jessica on what that looks like. Yeah, thanks, Isais. And then I also have a little uh, flyer at the bottom there. Um, this is one event that we're in collab we're working with in collaboration with the LGBTQ Center OC. They're having their advocacy day um this weekend or this Friday actually. Um, so something that we've been able to work on with them together in terms of what we want that to look like, and especially making it again like very um, what's uh. So we're looking for curated for you know queer folks in the queer community um so this kind of this tobacco awareness day is going to focus on like poetry art um and just kind of you know highlighting tobacco control work through through that art and and poetry so secondly would be to assist, or the second option i guess is going to be to assist out against big tobacco staff and outreach and engagement efforts at one to two local lgbtq plus community events such as pride parades um we do find that this is kind of like a really good space obviously to do both um outreach and engagement so that's something that we try to do as a program apply to you know at apply as an exhibitor to different um pride events so let me go ahead and go here. So this was this was literally outside WeHo. So <laughs> I just added this picture. But this is Victoria Jesus, one of our current subcontractors, and myself. We were tabling at WeHo Pride. That was really fun. Um, we were there both days and got to, I think we ended up getting over 200 survey responses. So definitely above and beyond what I kind of expected. Um, so that's great. And that's going to really help towards our data collection overall within the LGBTQ plus community. Um, and just like some examples of kind of the different um, events that we've had or different, you know, LGBTQ plus focus events that we've attended um, or again, acted as like a tabler. That's kind of what that would look like should you pick this option. Um, the third option is to assist us in the development of one to two LGBTQ plus tobacco related educational materials. So this would be like a fact sheet, uh, videos, if you know you're more creative that way. Experience in communications and or digital art design is required for this particular one. Um, and if Ari, you want to talk a little bit about why that is and kind of what that looks like. Yeah, sure, Jessica. Um, yeah, so, you know, as mentioned earlier, one of our main goals is to <laughs> engage you know various individuals organizations in this work um and so one of the ways we do that is by creating education materials um such as the trifold brochure um that y'all saw and some previous slides um that has some you know statistics on lgbtq tobacco use um and creating these you know ed materials does um, involve some you know graphic design um knowledge that's why we encourage folks um who do have any communications um, skills or experience to definitely apply to help us create some of these. Um, but yeah, tobacco prevention is not the most pressing issue our communities are trying to combat. So um, by creating these materials, it's just um, one of the ways we try to engage folks. Um, and, you know, they can take many forms. It could be like a fact sheet, a brochure like you see here, um, you know, any like video, like PSA or inspiring messages that like we want to create. Um, like a social media toolkit. I'm just listing off what, what they could potentially look like. But um, 
yeah, Jesus on this call is actually um, involved in our other uh, leadership development program for our We Breathe program um, that the network hosts. Um, and yeah, they were they were super helpful with creating um, a fact card specifically on LGBTQ youth and tobacco um, that they, you know, revitalized some like informational presentation they hosted for their organization and like kind of revitalized that and incorporated it into one of our education materials, which um, is currently being consumer tested since um, I'm getting a little into the weeds, but our, our ed materials, you know, just to ensure that they are relevant and resonate with LGBTQ communities, we want to make sure that they are consumer tested to um, get folks feedback, you know, on things like the design, legibility, um, you know, if the information is easy to understand, who they think the target audience is, things like that. Um, so yeah, that's essentially kind of like what education material um, creation would involve. But if folks have any other questions outside of this, um, you know, I'll, I'll leave my email in the chat so folks can reach out um, if you're thinking about applying and doing this, um, this option. Um, yeah, let me know. Thanks, Ari. And that was the third option, which is what we were looking at. Um, yeah, if you know you had any more questions for Ari. Um, and then the last option, so again, so there's four options, the last one being um, assisting uh, our staff in policy-oriented work in the cities of San Fernando or Signal Hill, um, emphasis on educating, kind of something that we will make a distinction more about between educating and lobbying, um, so just to ensure that we all kind of understand that this would be more so on the educating side. Um, and, you know, if you have a connection to San Fernando or Signal Hill, that would be great in terms of like really getting kind of having some maybe like background knowledge um, or again, a connection to those specific cities. And that is so I have some pictures here kind of like, again, when we were um, engaged in that kind of like policy oriented work. But really what it would include is kind of facilitation of participation from volunteers, members of the public. So that could be stakeholders representing LGBTQ plus serving um, organizations, agencies. A lot of the times this involves working like with resource centers, social justice organizations, um, universities, healthcare providers um, to present kind of at meetings of decision makers. So, so as ultimately we'd be gathering people, um, again, these different stakeholders for the sake of presenting at meetings of decision makers. Sometimes this might be like providing public comment at city town halls or attending, you know, um, different meetings in these particular jurisdictions so that we're able to kind of bring awareness to the different tobacco control work that we're doing or, you know, advocating for, or again, just ultimately educating um, the different people involved in the policy processing, I guess, or process part of it. Um, we So some of these pictures, two of these pictures, we recently just went to those informational and educational days hosted by Tobacco Endgame Center, where we get to educate our legislators about the, impor the importance of these um, tobacco control policies. So that one is definitely, I think, again, kind of all, all of this is like really like niche work, but if you're kind of a person who really is like about like the policy part of things, this would probably be a great option for you. So at a glance, I did want to kind of like, um, I guess not wrap up, but like wrap up kind of what is offered to you as a potential subcontractor. So tobacco control one-on-one -on -one training, that's definitely something that we do to for all of our subcontractors at the beginning, kind of as a part of the orientation process so that you're also well informed about kind of what's currently going on within Los Angeles County. Um, I do want to have this time around a community engagement program guide, guide sorry, so that you have step-by-step -step kind of instructions about how to be successful in this role. Um, network, networking opportunities, publicity for yourself or your organization. Um, obviously, this is a funding opportunity, so you do get kind of a stipend as part of, insure, or of completing this work with us. Leadership development. Um, Pride tickets, should you choose option number two, again, that would be helping us kind of collect different data surveys at the Pride events that we attend. So if you choose that option, that's something that kind of comes with that. Um, and then experience, right? Experience both kind of with working within this community, but also to, like overall the tobacco control advocacy work. Um, okay, I have DL mentioned in the chat, the South Coast Corral. I think that's how you say that. The LGBTQ plus community choir of Long Beach has close connection with members of the board of the city of Signal Hill. 
I am a CRA board member and can help facilitate instructions or connection and or programming. So that's great to hear. And that's definitely something that we would love to see in your application itself. Um, just so we kind of know when we're, you know, we all understand that that's the background that you have there. That's, yeah, that would be great to enter in your, in your application itself. So yeah, just kind of at a glance, some of the things that we are offering through this program. We're here to help. So all the selected subcontract subcontractors will receive a step-by-step -step guide. That's something that I did mention um, just right now. You know, that's something I really think it's important for the ultimate like kind of success of everyone, like not just for, you know, you, but the collaboration itself, right? Um, orientations will be conducted in August. So again, even though this program is, starts in July, we're really gonna kind of get like a good grip on things in August. Uh, monthly check-ins to ensure that you are being supported. And I understand that there's there might be some bandwidth with that. Obviously, we're here to work with you. We're here to help. So, um, but I do kind of want that to be like the, the starting point, I guess, so that, again, you feel that you're being supported, um, like, and there's a time frame for that. And then access to Out Against Big Tobacco staff and our networks. Obviously, something, again, like, you know, making sure that we're building on kind of like your um, ability to do this work that we want to make sure that we you know, introduce you to the networks that we have. And then how to apply. So kind of the, I guess the more specific um, step, steps, I guess, related to the community engagement program is please read the eligibility requirements carefully. I know we did go over that, but there's definitely kind of like, you know, full sentences within the application itself about kind of what um, the eligibility looks like. Um, but I did kind of review, you know, obviously the very important ones, um, completing and answering all questions thoroughly. So I know there's a couple of things in the chat right now. Um, so yes, our partner Gardena Cinema is a perfect place for dissemination of educational information, workshops, um, audio, visual trainings, et cetera. Yeah, so this is all great. Um, you know, definitely you'd be very thorough in the chat. So I imagine that'd be very thorough in the application itself. Um, submitting the application online, and this must include the completed online application, and then for organizations specifically, a copy, again, of your current 501c3 letter and tax ID. And then just like a last note on the deadline, these are due June 21st by 11.59 p.m. I believe that's a Friday. Let me double check. Yeah, that's Friday. So that's in about a little over two weeks. So just wanted to give a shout out to our current subcontractors, um, Q Youth Foundation, Los Angeles LGBTQ Chamber of Commerce, um, Mikey Viable, that's an individual who works um, within kind of like these spaces. Um, I know they are they're also working towards their harm reduction specialty certification. Um, so that's something that of course we wanna incorporate in this work. And then lastly, um, Latino Equity Alliance, Jesus, maybe if you have, I don't know if you have anything to say, if you wanna speak a little bit on it, that would be really helpful, otherwise, totally not required. Yeah, no, definitely. I can share. Um, I think uh, as far as like uh, um, being a part of this uh, coalition, uh, uh, we've been able to really create, uh, enhance our, our connections to different community partners uh, and uh, participating in the network calls uh, has been a great opportunity for us to be able to like uh, collaborate um, with the, not just the work that we're doing within the uh, coalition, but with the work that we're doing individually with our organizations or uh, or as a person, um, I think uh, um, the 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 staff is amazing. Um, I really enjoy working with them. Yes, um, I think they've always been so helpful and super easygoing. And um, I think for the most part, it's just been really it's it's been a phenomenal experience. And um, you know, I think I would love to continue working. And so you know, that's why I'm here again. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so looking forward to um, to seeing how we can continue our tobacco cessation advocacy and you know reducing health disparities related to tobacco um, as a group. So yes, back to you, Jessica. Thank you so much, Jesus, for your kind words. Huge. <laughs> love y'all. <laughs> okay, so this, this is where I'm going to open up the floor for questions. Um, really want to make sure you all feel supported in even the application process itself. So if you have any questions for myself or again, Ari, Isais, um, 
you can put it, you know, just come off mute, put it in the chat. I also want to give a, like a minute or two to Ryan because they also have their um, community, sorry, no, leadership development program. And I wanted to, you know, give you the space a little bit to talk about that. Um, should this kind of like, maybe you end up finding out you're not Los Angeles based, um, maybe, you know, We Breathe might be a better fit. Um, so go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, thanks, Jessica. Um, yeah, so um, We Breathe, which is under the same parent organization as Out Against Big Tobacco LA, uh, has actually a second uh, grant um, opening right now, open at the same time. We'll be closing it June 1st, uh, June 21st. So the same day as Out Against Big Tobacco closes. Um, this uh, grant, unlike the Out Against Big Tobacco LA one, is open to um, folk, uh, to individuals and organizations across the state of California. We'll be having a webinar um, tomorrow, at, I believe at 10 a.m., similar, similar to this one. So if um, I, can, I can drop in the registration link in a sec, but um, yeah, so if anyone's also interested, uh, thanks Ari for dropping it in the chat. Um, Ari just dropped in the chat. So um, if anyone's interested in also attending tomorrow's Zoom session, uh, specifically for the WeBreed grant, uh, feel free to join in. And um, this grant will be for $6,000 for the year. Uh, thanks, Jess. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, yeah, so so yeah, definitely this is kind of what they look like at, a, I guess, through our flyers, you know, just um, the differences between Out Against Big Tobacco and WeBreed. Again, um, I think just kind of the biggest difference will be, well, I mean, there's there's a lot of differences, I guess, considering it's a leadership development program versus community engagement. Um, but yeah, so, you know, should for whatever reason, um, you're not based in Los Angeles County, I think that's probably, I'm, I'm mentioning that because that was kind of an issue last time. Um, some folks ended up realizing they're not necessarily based in Los Angeles counties, but we breathe ended up being a really good fit. Um, but you are, if you are based here in Los Angeles County, um, then you're more than welcome to apply to our specific um, program. So I don't see any questions in the chat, but again, you know, we're going to be here this entire time. So if you have any questions, any questions arise, please feel free to contact me. I can go ahead and put my email. I don't think it's on the flyer itself, but sorry. Can't really multitask. Um, but there's my email address. Um, should you have any questions after this webinar? Um, uh, but hopefully that answers um uh, maybe any other kind of like concerns, questions that you had prior to this um, to this webinar. Um, oh, there's my contact information. Sorry, forgot I put it at the end there. But yeah, happy Pride Month, y'all. Um, if there are no other questions, again, you are more than welcome to contact me afterwards. Um, yeah, and I think that's it.